Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Native News Update. It's Friday, November 16th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. The Sault Ste. Marie tribe has asked a federal judge to dismiss the state of Michigan's lawsuit seeking to block the tribe from starting a process to take land into trust under the Michigan Indian Land Claim Settlement Act for Lansing Casino. On September 7th, State Attorney General Bill Shewitt filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Michigan in an apparent effort to stop the Lansing Casino project that would create 2,200 jobs. This week, the tribe asked U.S. District Court Judge Robert J. Jonker to dismiss the lawsuit, arguing it is totally without merit. But despite the litigation, the city of Lansing and the tribe continue to move full speed ahead on the plans for the casino. On November 1st, the city and the tribe completed a critical step in their effort to win federal approval of the $245 million casino, which will be built adjacent to the Lansing Center in the heart of the city's entertainment district. On that day, the tribe completed the agreement to purchase the city-owned land adjacent to the Lansing Center, where the casino will be built. Pending the outcome of the litigation, the tribe will soon apply to the federal government to take the land into trust, clearing the way for the construction. An agreement to purchase the site of a proposed rock quarry on a mountain near Temecula, California, and a seven-year dispute over the controversial project. The Pachanga Band of Locino Indians agreed to pay $3 million to buy 354 acres from the developer of the proposed Liberty Quarry. The Riverside Press Enterprise reports developer Granite Construction will get another $17.3 million in exchange for agreeing to not operate a quarry within the restricted area of the site through 2035. <laughs> No ot nanum, no neskinum. If it be chana, if it echa temeco porto. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Pichanga, and welcome to echa temeco. This is, this is our, and I say this collectively, this is our creation place. My name is Mark Macaro, and I am the tribal chairman for the Pichanga Band of Luceno Indians. A few hours ago, just this morning, we closed escrow on 365 acres on top of what the Pechanga people... Right. We... right, it's amazing. We're not gonna stop. Right, we, we don't want it to stop. We closed escrow on top of Pueska Mountain. This is our name. We could just call it Pueska, but it is that mountain right, right directly behind me. You may know it as the former Liberty Quarry Project site. <laughs> now, the Tribal Council recognized it was not enough to simply purchase land to stop the project there. We also needed assurances that the project would not resurface in our local community again. Yes. To us, this was a common struggle to stop the quarry, but for different reasons. Pueska, the mountain, is our people's place of creation for all Payumkowichum, all Luceno people. It is the Luceno Garden of Eden, Dome of the Rock, and Wailing Wall all together. But as members of this community who live and work here and to the hundreds of thousands of local residents, this was a cause that was worth fighting until the end for. Ultimately, we were united. And to us, it is about what we call community. I'll just close by saying that, you know, for us it's about stewardship, stewardship over the continuum of time, you know, the land belonged to our tribe, our ancestors, and then it didn't. And uh, that period of, the, of time that it has not belonged to us, uh, it's been, there, been under various stewardships. And, uh, you know, we want to work with, the, with that process of whoever the steward in charge is. And uh, we're hoping that as we move forward, you know, the story of this mountain 
it's not over because it's part of us now moving forward, as you said, you know, we're going to continue. And uh, together as a community and, and, and really put a bright light on the things that, that are meaningful to all of us, those common denominator issues, quality of life and basic health. The proposed Liberty Quarry would create a 1,000 feet deep pit on the mountain, producing up to 5 million tons of sand and gravel for construction projects. Critics argued it would create air quality problems, destroy a sacred Native American site, and damage tourism. Navajo and Hopi leaders were in Washington this week, meeting with federal officials and lawmakers over what steps, if any, can be taken to revive a $350 million water rights bill that stalled this past summer. At issue is a complex proposal to settle the tribe's claims to water from the Little Colorado River. The vehicle for that agreement was Senator John Kill's bill, which would have built three drinking water projects on the reservations in exchange for the tribes relinquishing their future water rights claims in the basin. The Arizona Republicans' bill initially had support from leaders of both tribes, but was rejected by tribal councils this summer in the face of strong opposition from tribal members, who called it a violation of Native sovereignty. But on November 14th, Navajo President Ben Shelley Hopi Chairman Leroy Shinguetia and other tribal chairmen met with Kill, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar, and Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs Kevin Washburn in what Salazar called a historic meeting to find a path to an agreement. Salazar said in his statement that the meeting was a productive one that would lay the groundwork for a fair and mutually beneficial agreement with the, the two tribes, the United States, and the state parties can agree on. He said any deal would respect the sovereignty of the tribes. Last week, tribal leaders from the Eastern Band of Cherokee and Forest Service personnel gathered at the future home of a $4.7 million Cherokee Youth Development Center. The project, which is completely funded through the tribe, is being constructed on 20 acres of Forest Service land, which Chief Hicks hopes to eventually do a land exchange of equal value. But for now, the tribe entered into a 25-year lease with the Forest Service for the center. Hicks hopes that sometime in the future, a Cherokee language immersion school can also be added to the community. The 14th Annual Native American Music Awards, which was supposed to be on November 30th at Seneca Niagara Events Center, has been rescheduled for Friday, May 10th, 2013. People who have bought tickets for the show can retain their tickets for the new dates. For those that want a refund, the tickets purchased at any Seneca casino must be returned to their original point of purchase location, and those purchased tickets through Ticketmaster may seek a refund at any Ticketmaster location. And for those still needing tickets for the new May 10th date, they are now on sale. The show organizers tragically lost their home due to Hurricane Sandy last month and had initially tried to keep the original date before deciding to postpone the show till May. When the upcoming Native American Music Awards resumes on May 10th, it will mark the sixth consecutive time the show takes place at the Seneca Niagara Events Center. Renowned comedian, ventriloquist, and puppeteer Buddy Big Mountain, Tony Duncan, the world champion hoop dancer featured in Nelly Furtado's music video, Big Hoops, and Indian E are among a dozen Native American entertainers and musicians throughout North America who will be part of the final performance lineup. Thrash Metal Legends Testament recently took home the award for Best Music Video at the American Indian Film Festival for their clip for the track Native Blood. The song, which lyrics are about the vocalist Chuck Billy's Native American heritage, was filmed at the Hopland Indian Reservation in Hopland, California, and was directed by Mike Slowett.
commented that he is very happy to have their video recognized, but the award and praise goes to Mike Slowett for making his vision come to life and conveying such a powerful message. Author Louise Erdrich won the Nobel Prize in Literature in the Fiction Genre for her new book, The Round House, a story about life on the Ojibwe Reservation. Erdrich accepted the prize in recognition of the elegance and strength of Native women and mentioned that her novel is about a great injustice. The novel tells about the moral and judicial failure in the United States and gives a portrait of a community based on traditions, values, and cultural stories. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.